How to record credit card transactions in QuickBooks Online. Hey everyone, this is Matt Hulquist with the QuickBooks University. So I'm going to go over a general overview of how to record credit card transactions in QuickBooks Online because this, you know, there could be multiple, uh, I don't want to say multiple different ways, but you know, you could be talking about a, a payment to a credit card, a charge, etc. I'm going to go through the manual and the bank feed way to record credit card transactions in QuickBooks Online. Okay, so here we are in a sample company file, and for this uh, video, we're going to assume that you are using your credit card to buy something for the business, and we need to record this in QuickBooks. So you can do this manually, or you can do it through the bank feed. So the manual way that you wanna do this is let's say that you you know you get your statement at the end of the month and uh, or you you just charge at some point during the month and you go into quickbooks and you need to record that transaction all right there's some important things that you want to keep in mind so first you're going to go up here and click new and you're going to go to vendors and expense so when this screen comes up, you're going to put in first, who did you pay? We'll say Bob's Burger Joint. And very important, you want to make sure that you choose the payment account for the credit card you used. So in this case, it's going to be a MasterCard. We're going to make sure that the date is correct. Now, the date, the payment date is going to be the date that you charged it. So this is extremely important. If you are manually entering your credit card transactions in QuickBooks Online, you have to put in the charge date. And the reason for that is the charge date on a credit card is when the expense happens. Regardless if your cash basis, accrual basis, doesn't really matter. On a credit card, it counts as an expense when you charge it. So when you enter these charges, it's gonna to default to today's date. But if you're going off a statement, and let's say that this date was back, you know, September 20th, then you want to make sure that you change that date. Otherwise, you're going to get expenses in the wrong months and it's going to throw off your profit and loss. All right, so we'll say 9-20-2023. Payment method is going to be the MasterCard that we chose. And then, of course, you're going to put in the category, which is just the account. So we're going to say this was for meals. All right, we'll just say meals and entertainment. What did you pay for? You don't have to put in a description. The amount, we're going to say 5236. And if you are billing this to a customer, then you want you want to go ahead and assign this. But we're going to assume this is just you know a business launch and we're charging it on the MasterCard. So this is the manual way. Once you're done entering this information and you get the date right, you put the payment account right, you're going to hit save and close. Now you have recorded a credit card charge that you made. And when you go to reconcile your credit card at the end of the month, that will show up so you can check it off when it matches the statement. Now, let's talk about bank feeds. This is going to be a much, much easier way to enter credit card transactions in QuickBooks. All right, so if we go to banking services, oh, well, they move this around. Let's go up to bank transactions up here. And you're going to see that uh, we have the bank feed set up for the checking savings and the MasterCard. I highly, highly recommend that you set up the bank feed for your credit cards in addition to your checking and savings accounts. So what this does, what the bank feed does, is this brings all the transactions from your credit card automatically into QuickBooks. It links to the credit card and brings everything in. None of this is going to be in your books until you actually add or match or choose an option here. If you don't, it will not add it into QuickBooks. So what we, what you want to do is you, you know, as these charges come in, so you can go out, you can charge your lunch, you can do other things. You can choose to go in and manually enter the charge. And then when it shows up in the bank feed, you're going to match it to that transaction. So the matching function means that it's already entered in QuickBooks. QuickBooks recognizes the amount and the charge, and you're going to match to the charge. So we're going to say 1897, that's a match, and you see it disappears. But then you're going to have some that are, you know, there might be two matches found, and you choose that, and you say, oh, okay, well, this was the one on 910 for 1999. So you're going to choose which one and then match. 
And if you don't see it, you can find other matches as well, and QuickBooks will search for you. Now, what happens when you get something like this? Lara's, uh, Lara's lamination for $150, uncategorized expense, and there is no match. What that means is that either QuickBooks doesn't recognize that there is a match, or uh, you have not entered it manually so that there is not going to be a match. So what you're gonna do in these situations you're going to go to un you're going to click on uncategorized you're going to say you can choose the payee we'll say lara's lamination and my guess is that lara's lamination is not in quickbooks so let's add this we'll say add new lara's lamination and if you want to enter in all this information you can but typically you're not going to need to so we're going to save this and we are going to call you're going to categorize this we're going to say that this was just office expenses and then if it's billable to a customer of course you can do that you can add attachments create a rule etc so now once you've done this you're going to say add and it's going to add laura's lamination so when you go to reconcile again at the end of the month that'll be in there so the bank feeds are just a quicker way to add transactions uh, from your credit card into QuickBooks without having to manually enter every one of those charges. You can still manually enter them if you want, and then you can match them like I showed you a minute ago, or you can let them just you know build up over the month. At the end of the month, you can just add them and then reconcile your credit card. So those are the basics of how to record credit card transactions in QuickBooks Online. If you have any questions, any comments, feel free to leave those below, and I will see you in the next video.